Brecky. Hey, man. Brecky. Where's me Brecky? I, do me li- me. I want to do me Liverpool accent, Eric. You Where's me Brecky? Where's me Brecky? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from Japan. It's actually Friday morning, 6.07 a.m. here. This is Gray, of course, from Wakizashi's Tea House. No tea today, but I do have a nice, um, what's it called? A pour over, Eric? Oh, it's a, a pour over. What kind a pour of, over of coffee. coffee. Nice. In Japan, it's called a coffee server. <laughs> That's Hi. it. Coffee Hi. server. <laughs> So how are you doing? I'm here. I'm joined by the the wonderful, the incredible, the salt and the soup, the the Reverend Comics Talk with Reverend Sully, Eric O'Sullivan. How are you, Hello. Eric? I'm well, great. Good to see you, man. Cheers. Clink. Cheers. I have I brought some hot chocolate. It's too Ooh. late in the day for me to be drinking coffee, and uh, I only drink on weekends now because I'm an old man. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Oh my it's goodness! True. I would have brought a pint of Guinness or something, but you know, no thanks. No, you two no don't thanks. like that, do they, Eric? They, um, don't? I mean, I've, I've had streams demonetized because you can't show either drinking alcohol or you can't show smoking tobacco or whatever oh. else you, you want to smoke. So yeah, but it doesn't matter because hey, what, what do my streams earn? I know. Three but cents still. and thirty-three. Wow, that's great. Makes me like my, my, my vision of monetization ever is that much closer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, um, you know, you've been really you've been working hard recently on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. Enjoying your I N C E L. See you to next stay Tuesday that? stream. So oh, how's that goodness. been going? What what made it's you start been, that? It was it's my usual morning fare. Okay, in the morning times, I'm a spiritual yeah. guy. Uh, for everyone out there in TV land who don't know me, hi, I'm Gray's friend, Eric, Eric O'Sullivan from Boston, Massachusetts, um, USA. And I am, I'm, I'm, I'm Gray's age too, I'm 51, and Gray just turned 50. And so we're like, we're pairs. No, I'm 51 read, too. Oh, really? That's January. right. Yeah. January, January, oh, yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, We're old men and we're proud, and aren't we, Eric? Exactly. So we've read all like the same stuff of comics growing up in a way, you know, like the Animal Man, the Vertigos, and, you know, we share this culture. And it's great that we've got to connect, you know, through YouTube and through our, the shows that we watch. And now we're like, we, we're both panel mates on a very awesome Saturday morning show or Sunday evening, wherever that, you know, wherever you are. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, it's called uh, Thinking Critical with Wes. He's got a really successful uh, um, show. You should go check him out and subscribe. And uh, he does mm-hmm. lots of comic book content. And this is what unites us is comic books. And, you know, uh, floppies, comic books, adventures of our superheroes, a oh. um, uh, Batman and Spider-Man and all that stuff. And we like talking about it. And we like talking about the industry. And we like talking about the format and the pages and the ink and the art and the writing. And it, it's the onomatopoeia. The onomatopoeia. That's right. <laughs> I love it when you say that. And um, Thanks, right? you, actually, I, I'm all joking aside. You've got uh-huh. me to notice that a lot more than I used to good, because good. I love it. I love it when people do like you know their own lettering and like yes. different different styles, like really cool big 3D ones or crazy yes. stuff. We used to do that when we were kids, didn't we? You know, sketching yes. in our in our textbooks and stuff. It's 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 a, it, for those out there. On onomatopoeia is a word that is spelled the way it sounds. It is the sound effect in your comic book. Bamf, snit, boom, pow, <laughs> and uh, so in the back in the day before, say but like before like Marvel Knights, I noticed okay like comic book stuff like before Marvel Knights in 1999, 2000 or so, and like mm. Ultimate Comics, uh, that's when we started turning the corner uh, in publishing when things went a little di- started to go digital, and more so in lettering, yeah, and in coloring lettering and coloring and also with onomatopoeia now we started getting blur effects then we got these massive like for motion we got blur effects now we've got really sharp colors and and, and you can and lettering was being done by like you know comic craft and visual calligraphy that's vcs like you know if you ever see some of the literary says vcs that's visual calligraphy that's it that, that's oh i didn't know what the, that stood for cool yeah, it's one of the how and that in the comic craft that's Richard Starking's company, um, and they do lettering. And it's not just hand-drawn lettering. They do a lot of digital lettering as well. So with the digital lettering, it uh, comes digital onomatopoeia, the word that's spelled the way it sounds. And so it's um, they're usually hand-drawn by the artist. And it's, so it's, it, it's very, you know, it, it's included. It's part of the art. And so nowadays, it's kind of like drop and drag, 
mm-hmm. and and cut and paste. So yeah. when it was hand drawn, it had a, an organic line and charm to it that it looked real. It looked like it was part of the art. And it reminds me of the classic underground comics from the old days, yes. even like proper indie comics. And we see it a lot in Daniel Warren Johnson. He loves mm-hmm. doing it. Yes, he he exactly. goes crazy with it, doesn't he? It's beautiful. It's beautiful, uh, it's it's beautiful to me. Transformers series. Yeah, because it, and it's, it's it's enriching and it's part of the experience. And but now, if you look at your modern Marvel comic and your modern DC comic, it looks like all all the sound effects look identical because they are identical mm. they just might be adjusted for size blown up a bit and um but but they're just cut and paste they're dropped and dragged and um it's just sometimes it's it's it interrupts my the flow of the of the panel or like my enjoyment of the art itself because it's so artificial you know C- comic books Come on. <laughs> That's cool, though. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. Thank you. Do you know what? I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years. I used to say onomatopoeia. And it's it's, pear, anyway. You know, you also say potato. and You say or, tomato. I say tomato. Controversy. <laughs> Recent controversy at the BBC. Oh, controversy? Are controversy. you talking about controversy, Eric? <laughs> I'm going to get Eric to do his British accent later as well, because I love it. Oh. I, always try and, I, I try and get everyone to do British accents because, you know what, folks? My American accent sucks. I can't do it anyway, so... There we go. Awesome. So, comics, comics, comics. Yes, we, we love comics. Um, despite the craziness of the comic book world mm-hmm. at times, especially at the moment, it's been going a bit weird. We are still huge supporters of the, the medium, you know, of storytelling. Of the, It's a fantastic medium. But, Eric, what would you say to people who, who are like have a go at us and say, come on, you are 50 years old, 51 years yes. old, and you're still yes. reading comic books? What's oh, you're that still all reading about? funny books? What, you, you, you haven't grown up yet? <laughs> Well, it, well, it's entertainment. I mean, what are you reading? You're not yeah. like you know, like me. I know what chicks are reading. The Fifty Shades of Grey. That's <laughs> okay. I read. 50 it's me. Shades of that's Grey. about me, you know. By the way, <laughs> that's you. That's right. <laughs> no, no, thanks. Um, yeah, because we love, we love the medium. Just said so. We love it. It's storytelling, yes. um, escapism, maybe not exploration. You know, and I, I got into it because of art. I, I love yes. comic book art, even mm-hmm. before the storytelling. When I was young enough to, you know, say, "Wow, that picture of Batman looks awesome." I yes. just got hooked from when I was like six or seven years old. You want some good Batman that's fresh off the press? Try yeah. um, this week's Poison Ivy, number 21, by uh, written by G. Willow Wilson, who I think is doing the yeoman's work. Uh, she's doing, and we all talk about, you know, the Stephanies and the Jodies and the Teenies <sighs> and the Vitas and the Sama Amanats, but we never mention G. Willow Wilson, who... Bloody Well is a story storyteller, a comic book storyteller, and he writes a good script. And so you've been sleep probably everyone out there in TV land, you have been sleeping on Poison Ivy by G. Willow Ooh. Wilson up to twenty one. It's still issues. the year one story at the moment. It kind it just fin- that finished. wrapped up. It was part three okay. and three of the, the the secret origin of Pamela Isley. And mm. but in this issue, it's like she's so it's it's act three of our three act story. She's full on. She's had her transformation. She's lost her humanity. She's basically died and be reborn as Poison Ivy. And she's now entered Gotham. And she's got her most classic outfit on. And she's contending with a very Bronze Age looking Batman and young Dick Rapes and Robin in the most classic looking oh, cool. Robin outfit. So it looks it looks proper. You know, we don't... It's like even over at Mark Wade and Dan Mora's um, Teen Titans, like, you know, World's Finest Teen Titans, you know, they, they give Robin's like 15 or 16 by then, and they give him pants, you know, and, and boots. But this is like... Let me see if I can share. I'll share some of the images. I'll be right back. You keep going. Cool. Here we go. This is like, you know, like a 10-year-old Dick Grayson. He's got the short pants and the pixie boots and the yellow cape. He's a kid. He's the boy wonder. He's not yet the teen wonder. And I think that's a really good age for Robin. That's like my favorite Robin is like, because I was a kid. I was nine years old and I was Robin, you know what I mean? And so that like, he's like, he really is like this vehicle into the world itself where you can use your imagination and be there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And the interior art in this is pretty darn good. And the the panel progression, it still has the dawn of DC trade dress. I believe that will be going away with the absolute power summer event. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So G. Will Wilson, and it's um, it's Marcio Takara as the artist. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know the name. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, and this is just it's it's her. She she's hallucinating. She's just the becoming, Floronic man. Yeah, Eric. that's Floronic man. Jason yeah. Woodrow. Yeah, Ooh. and he goes way back too. I mean, he goes back all the way, say like to Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. That's where I know him from. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Oh, that stuff oh my god, that's good. gorgeous. Oh, look at that page. Yeah, and this is you know probably digitally lettered and digitally colored. Everything is now, you know, pretty much. Looks like it. Yeah. And um, but the, the the Batman in this is just like it's I just and this is this is so good. This is a well told story. Let's have a look if we can find. Oh, there she is in the costume. She, and Brilliant. She, see that? I mean, that is the classic Ivy. Eco terrorist so threatens cool. Gotham. Fantastic. <laughs> Look at this, the cops see... there. <laughs> They're in yeah. love. It's so her, she her, can her... like she, she using her powers there. She can yeah. like uh, she's, use she's some figuring kind of it out that charm. she's got this power. That she's like, wow. oh, I need to learn how to control this. You know? And um, there, there it is. is. Look at it. There it is. Look at that. It's somewhere between Mike Minola and Neil Adams. And with a split, you know, it's got some Frank Miller on the belt because Batman didn't have pouches in the Bronze Age. He had pods. It was Frank Miller that brought in the pouches on, oh, really? the, bat- on the utility belt from the Batman 66 show because it was practical to have pouches on Adam West's bat- uh, utility belt. This is, yeah, dude, I know that shit. <laughs> that, is, that is a great show. I love it. A great Look panel. at that. So heroic. Whoa. So iconic. But that, that's Robin. Look at him. He's got to be t- 10, 11 years old. Short Freeze. pants and pixie Hands boots. Up now. Look at her face. This is like straight up, like this is like really tight kind of Italian style beauty model stuff. Like it reminds me of Milo Manara in a way. You ah. know, just beautiful faces, beautiful figures. Great respect for the female form here. I love that little panel there with Batman throwing whatever he's throwing there. He's one of his yeah, weapons. The, look the at the Look it's at a, the movement. A, a bat bolo. Look at that follow through. Look at that kinetic motion and a little Brilliant. blur effect too. I mean, that's there's a lot of digital stuff there, but that's this is this is fun. It was, it was a good comic. I mean, people are sleeping on this, so this is nice one. That's a good a recommendation bit. from Thank Eric you, there. Man. So Poison Ivy, the part 21. three of three just came out. Cool. Get yourself some floppies. Go to your local comic book shop, and because Gray will be jealous of you because it's so hard for him to get physical copies. <laughs> I know. I miss being able to walk in and just browse. That's the, that's mm-hmm. the main thing, you know. It's a it's a three and a half bus ride to Osaka, or mm-hmm. maybe a, a plane flight, one hour twenty plane flight to Tokyo. That's the only places I know that have physical comic book shops mm-hmm. at the moment. So I can order, you know, I can mail order. That's no problem. But it's not the same, is it? You want to walk in there. You want you want to be tactile you want to touch these comics you want to like browse through them it's so important just seeing the cover art seeing what like draws you in what pulls you in what says buy me I miss it that. says buy me like buy uh me. Like this read week, me you have the the uh the last mermaid number two from image comics and it's a it's a really interesting independent comic book but okay. the thing is it leaps off the shelf at you because it is square it is a square Let's... comic book, yeah, and, it, and it's so it's got unique dimensions. It even says that if you you're a big fan of League of Comic Geeks, uh, it'll yeah. say right there on the page unique dimensions, because comic books are usually eight and a half inches by ten and a what ten and a quarter, and uh, that's like the, the the universal size for what we know as the floppy. Let's have a look if, if I can find that, Eric. Little was it Little Mermaid? Uh, the, the Last Mermaid. The yeah, be down mermaid. a little bit. Do, this do, is do. League of Comic Geeks. There it is on that uh, third one in. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a very cute cover. It's and it's a, it it's like a, a Pikachu book. or yeah, a Pokemon Monster. Those, those are, those are a, a, a real uh, lizard, like, you know, a little... Uh, it's not an insect. It's not a fish. Is, is it, it a sea it, monkey, Eric? Please tell it's, me it's a sea monkey. I think it's some kind of, like, sea I used to want those. <laughs> oh, God. They, 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 that, was, that was frozen shrimp. I know. Yeah. When someone told me that years later, it kind of half broke my heart. I thought they were real. Little sea monkeys. Little people. Little populations in, in your fish tank. Oh, man. Oh, God. Sorry. I'm losing it. Okay. So, Eric, while I've got you here, I know it's yes. a bit early for like what we're looking forward to coming out. This is oh wait a minute, this is this week, isn't this it? This is this week. This is this week, not this week. So, anything up. that's really jumping out to... Make you want to buy, to read? I'll tell you what I'm putting down. Batman 146. I haven't picked up an issue since the solicits for 
the absolute power summer event is coming out because yeah what's the point i mean we see what fail safe the right there you know there's no more suspense there's no more tension and um it's kind of like the price we pay to for being comic book fans because solicits go out three months in advance that's when previews that they, they used to be a comic book a big book called previews and this would be a book that you know, the, the comic book shop would rely upon. It has the, yeah. the official solicit from the publisher. Where Let's you make would, it bigger, Eric, like you number. Do. Oh, my there goodness. Go. Ooh, ladies. Hello. And you know what was great was Immortal Thor number nine by L. I like the cover of that. That it's cover really actually Ross cover. Yeah, got me want, you know, wanting to buy her to read it. So I haven't read it. It's an Alex Ross know. cover. Look at that. Look at that cover. Yeah. It's really it really meta. Doing... It looks a bit Grant Morrison. Animal Man thing is like, you know, realizing they're in a comic Kinda. book. It gets, and at the end of it, because it, there's a world of magic going on too with Enchantress. Okay. And it brings in Scourge the Executioner. So you have all these old familiar characters, the Minotaur. And Thor is, you know, I just read a book on, on Norse mythology. So I kind of caught up a bit on the old, mm. you know, the classic takes on the gods and stuff. And Thor was a bit dumb historically. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's how I've I've seen he's him or the, read about him being written or portrayed. He was a yeah. bit of an idiot, wasn't he? A bit he's of a fool. Like, he, he's very virtuous. He's very heroic. He's noble. He's loyal. He can be angry, and but he's just he's not the sharp. He's not the brightest one on the team. And um, that's a wonderful cover of Enchantress. Uh, that that uh, the one that was before. great, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And wow. um, and so this is like Thor, try, like you know at his smartest but he's still a bit so i was like it was, that was a nice reminder because it made me enjoy al ewing's thor a little more i've been reading this for the past couple of months and it's gone completely over my head i'm like i i like the art so much that i'm reading this comic book i'm completely disinterested in but this oh, is really made... yeah i haven't been reading it eric um al ewing sometimes he's, he's kind of hit and miss with me mm -hmm. i liked his his immortal hulk but that was really uh -huh. the last thing i really read by him now look at this cover here this is okay. the one of the variants. Where are we? Come on, Graham. You know what you're doing. This is a um, the vampire variant. Yeah, isn't it cool? Yeah. Look at that. These are all leading into Blood Hunt, the um, the Marvel summer event. And um, so you, every every Marvel book this month is getting a variant cover that's like this. But if you look at the top of it, so these are all based upon Bronze Age books. That is the like the Marvel Comics iconic banner trade dress yes, look I remember. of the Bronze Age. And it's ripping off like Adventure and uh, you know uh, Adventure into Fear. Like this is like what was the um was it Journey into Adventure? That was the first appearance of Thor. And then Journey oh, really? into Adventure becomes Thor like as in page as in issue numbers along the way. I believe that's it. Yeah. Very cool. I've seen some of these vampire themed covers and some are kind of okay, so I'm not, I'm not sure about mm -hmm. this is a cracker. And part of that is this this design. I love the lettering. I love the mm -hmm. as you say, the banner there. Old school. Yeah, and look mm. at the behind you. There, there there's a there's a castle, the, there's some great steps there that does not look like a three D asset. That looks hand drawn like a mobile. Hand drawn, folks. Uh, and that's a, a classic the Pieta. Michelangelo's Pieta of the weeping, wailing uh, Mary holding the dead Christ. This is also George Perez's Superman holding Supergirl Crisis on Infinite Earths. This is iconic. This wow. is Batman holding the dead Jason Todd. Oh yeah. You know, this is this is everywhere. <laughs> this is great. That's art. Come on, come on. that's art interpretation. Nice. I love art. <laughs> that's brilliant fantastic so that's a recommendation is it from eric yeah i think four, that random Immortal four yeah i, I enjoyed nine. the hell out of that legacy issue 770 mm. indeed what's on my poll uh, any of these on my poll list um no nothing here in the first two rows i, I read that x-men book i read all of these issues <laughs> be honest with you i read them all uh, let's go down did you read um void rivals i've not read that one I yet i did not read that's the no. one i haven't read i'm not interested I, I i read issue one i got a i got a one in 25 variant cover because i could like i could i got the okay. you know i, I could have got a one in 100 but that literally would have cost 75 bucks like no thanks i'll take i'll pay 25 <laughs> yikes bucks. i'll pay 25 bucks for this one in 25 variant 
why yeah. not? It's it's a key issue because it is the first issue in the Energon universe. So it is a key issue. Hey, I read Gunslinger Spawn. That was fun. That was easy to get into. The art was really good. <clears throat> it's uncomplicated and it was easy to read. And I like the I like that. Guns, Gunslinger Spawn 30. It was a bit of a weird one for me, this latest one, Eric. I was kind of like, oh, you know, he's driving with um, this this middle-aged lady, isn't he? Yes. I, I kind of forgotten how they met up, but yeah, it's a bit of a, a chill-out issue. Yeah, it's it's some kind of in-betweener. Maybe yeah, it's because the status... It's because the status quo got reset. I, I enjoyed Spawn 351. It's me the too. First that was really Spawn good, wasn't it? Yeah. It's the first issue with Spawn I've read in years. And so it's a, what a great place to start. New status quo, you know, right out, you know, and so everything's fresh. And it just, and it was great story. And guess what? Uh, Gunspin, Gunslinger Spawn, letters, hand-drawn Ooh. by Tom Orzachowski. Tom Orzachowski is a legend. Marvel Comics, <laughs> Bronze Age. He did all the Uncanny X-Men and New Mutants. You know, Tom okay. Orzachowski is just, see, I love it. His style. I love lettering. Tom Orchowski is why I noticed lettering. Yeah. Oh, and he's still I'll tell you working. what, Eric, on this, um, these two rows, the ones that have really stood out for me, and I've, because I've been off this week, I've had a bit of extra time, I managed to get uh -huh. reviews of each of them done. It's the three Ghost Machine issues. Sure, We've got yeah. Geiger, issue one, Rook, Exodus, issue one, and mm -hmm. down below, Redcoat, issue yeah. one, which I've heard compared to uh, almost like a young John Constantine, well, a young John <laughs> Constantine lost in time, and it does work with that because there's a great supernatural that. element to the story. I heard I Han Solo, it. like, you know, an <laughs> and, and immortal yeah, yeah, Han yeah. Solo, you know what I mean, on, on Earth. And um, one thing I didn't like, well, I mean, Brian it's, Hitch, I'm out there, Eric. Really good work by him. Brian Hitch face everywhere. It's like, it's like he hasn't evolved since Ultimates. He hasn't, you know what I mean? He, he's, I'm not saying oh, it's that the same style thing. for sure. Yeah, it's the same, yeah, yeah. But it's someone like Ramita has changed, you know, he's just, he just keeps on tweaking his style over, like, you know, over time. But like Hitch, maybe he's just comfy in that zone. I mean, even Lennel Yu, like Francis Link, Lennel Yu. He, he's a lot different now too, style wise. So mm. the older they get, they kind of they, they mix it up a little bit more. This is like you know, visually for me, it was like seeing it was, it was fine. You know what I mean? It was, it was what got me though was um, the, the Rook Exodus number one that Jason Fabic art in that absolutely a brilliant killer. Absolutely. Yeah, that was my favorite of the three. It was a close one. It was Rook Exodus, then it was Red Coat, and then Geiger mm -hmm. was the third. But look, I Jason Fabox out. Oh my yeah. goodness. This is like $3.99, 60, 60 pages, I think. It's a massive bumper book, a, yeah. Yeah. Let's find and, the black and white cover. There's an amazing black and white version. Where is it? Boom, there. But yeah, I mean, Jeff Johns got three books this week. Oh. Look at look that. At oh, that. Eric. Ah, oh, Faybox the man. Hard to get. It's something like Jeez. one in two hundred or one in five hundred, maybe this to get this. Like really? Wow. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. I I splurge on an occasional variant cover. Oh really? I, yeah, because I can and I can afford it, and and it de depends on like, like wow, that's eye catching. I can do that. Like I've almost been a sucker for for stuff that you know that I don't even read. Like Birds of Prey, the last issue had this wonderful big Barda cheesecake. You know what I mean? In, in a tight sweater. <laughs> and I was like, I love Big Barda. I'm a sucker. I, I'm such a sucker for Big Barda. Strawberry I cheesecake? Hello? Lemon cheesecake? <laughs> oh, the big slice of Big Barda, please. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I'll tell you what else caught me out here as well. Sacrifices came back after a couple of months um, yes. hiatus. That was um, issue really seven made it's pretty, pretty dark. It's, it's, you dark know, it's weird, yeah. dark fantasy, isn't it? It is. And uh, it's like, it's like, it's, it's been like, it's had that mini hiatus, like you said. So now is a good chance. Now is a good time to let, let's go back and reread, and then come back into it. And just yeah, refresh absolutely. yourself because so much happens in issue six that, like, I'm actually wondering, like, oh, what happened again? Oh, I, I need to re refresh my memory, and you know, understand the status quo. And same here. I actually went back and um, started reading while well, reread from number one. It's like, good. Wow. Oh, wow. Great story. It's um, Next, I'd say it's yeah. a little bit dark, a little bit dark there. Rick Remender, but I love the art by Max Fiumara. Yeah, really good, really good art. His style is a little bit it's unique, but I like it. Okay, 
So there we go. We've got some recommendations. Also, I just reviewed yesterday, Eric, my time. Mm-hmm. So Thursday evening, oh, Spider-Man, cool. Shadow of the Green Goblin. That was a fun issue. I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yes. Because it was an, it's like, it's young Spidey and it has none of the luggage of co- of modern continuity or anything. Right. Hmm. And so it's, compl- it's blissfully free of all this luggage and it can just, and I, J. Michael Straczynski. Now he's, he is missing it with me on, on Captain America. I don't know what's up with that book. I haven't liked anything. All okay, this issues. one is actually J.M. DeMatteis. J.M. DeMatteis. Oh, oh, shit. That's right. I'm sorry. Oh, it was the J's that got me. Oh, crap. The J's it, always get oh, me crap. as well. Sorry about that. But J.M. DeMatteis <laughs> no. here, he wrote Craven's Last Hunt. He oh, wrote my God. A lot I love of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sorry, J. Michael Straczynski. Sorry. <laughs> I was getting mixed up, too, because I thought J.M. DeMatteis had a run on Spider-Man, but that was... Straczynski, wasn't it? Or am I getting mixed up now as well? They both, <laughs> actually, the you know, they both did. Straczynski had a wonderful <laughs> run, especially with John Romita Jr. and Scott Hanna. Minus like 10 geek points, Gray. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh. The late 90s to the early aughts. It was a huge J. Michael Straczynski, June, John Romita Jr., Scott Hanna. Oh, God, those stories were so good. You know, there's just they're one. that's a wonderful time to be a, a Spider-Man fan. A Spider-Man fan. Uh, Eric, they, this cover here, can I just yeah. ask you, the Green yeah. Goblin looking a bit feminine. Feminine to me here. Well, <laughs> that's what really caught my smile. eye. You know what I mean? He's got the face well, and the smile. Dangerous. So. Look at those ears. They're huge. Love it. Uh, yeah, but this was a fun book. This is going to be a good trade paperback when it collects. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It's a new-to-me artist. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. I'm still here. The artist's name, where are we? Where are we? There we go. Got it. Michael Sta Maria. I don't know why it's S-T-A. Michael Sta Maria. But I love his style. It's an old school style. A little bit of like a, 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 what's the word? More skillful version of John Romita Jr., if I dare say that. <gasps> Cancel Grey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's snowing here. Are you snowing? Oh, are you snowing, Eric? It was. It was what? It was. Uh, you what, love? I what? I was. I was up the chimney. Oh, the chimney sweep. Oh, Jim, also... chimney, chim, chimney. Oh, never mind. No, don't start singing, Graham. Whatever you do. Okay. No, you're good. You're good. So yeah, that's cool. We got some recommendations out there. Speaking How of musical. Doing? Okay, are we having an unboxing right now? Are you doing the unboxing? Okay, let me stop sharing an the screen. Here we go. Oh my goodness. What great. do you have in your in your hands there, Eric? Ladies. Well, you reminded me with, with your musical cue. It's not a line to get into the theatre. <laughs> Song of the South. Ooh. From Spain, where it's still a in Spanish print. version. Let me just make that full yeah. screen one and more it, time. There we go. And Boom. it's um, this is fully in English with with or without Spanish subtitles. Canción del Sur. You know, to Oscar nominations, yeah. I like and, the cover uh, art, songs. by the way. It's painted art there. Yeah, and I believe Jay Basket got a, an Oscar for that, too. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, what made you pick that up? Uh, by ongoing physical convers- media. Ongoing conversations about um, censorship and modern Disney, and then people mm. are presuming that, okay, they're at Disney World or Disneyland in uh, Orlando, Florida, Splash Mountain has been taken away and replaced with like Tia's Princess Tia from Princess and the Frog, um, was a, a young princess of color. And um, Splash Mountain was based on Song of the South with Br'er oh, Bear, no Br'er way. Rabbit, and all the songs yeah. and all the characters. And so all, <laughs> uh, you know, Br'er Bear and Br'er Rabbit and all, you know, it's Br'er Rabbit. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And they were taken away the because character. they're deemed to be racist and and they're not and because this is like it's not about the people who are just conflating this with 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 racism and slavery and it's like so we have you know you know lorena creole on on twitter yes i know she's the a, the name yeah lorena she's a she, she's a beautiful woman of color and she's from the south and she <clears throat> is like she just always is like no don't let them fool you song of the south is one of the most wholesome movies these are some of them these are authentic african-american uh, stories that are in here uh, that shouldn't be forgotten because of your miscommunicating and, uh, and mislabeling this wonderful movie. And I, I haven't seen this since I was a kid. 
So, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen it all the way through. I don't remember it being on TV zippity when I was doom young. Da, in the UK. Day. Yeah, I know oh, the songs. My, my. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm going to probably end up crying. You know what I mean? Like, I remember this. Plenty of sunshine coming my way. <laughs> See, look at that. How would I even know those words from because growing up in the UK in Manchester? I have no idea. It was part of our culture. That yeah. was like West Big. It was 1947 Disney movie, and it went everywhere. You know. So, are you saying is this not available now on on D Plus? Have they have they censored themselves? Have they decided yeah. that we are not we're not adult enough to watch them right it's not available for purchase like you know over the u.s distributors or something or it's not that it's censored it's just it's not produced so it's not on market the stuff you can producing get, it my goodness. yeah exactly it's been it's been put in the crypt and it's been shelved yeah unless like culture <sighs> changes again people like relax you know <laughs> Frankie says, "Relax." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see, folks, we are the same age. Eric gets these, gets these references. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry, my God, he's a drop a clip quick, quick, quick. Oh, he swaps his long sword for a wakizashi. So. Hi. Tell me go. how he died. No, I'll tell you how he lived. Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai. <laughs> oh, I, you know, speaking of that, Ken Watanabe yeah. is awesome in that, of course, and so is Tom Cruise, surprisingly. Uh-huh. But I'm watching um, Tokyo Vice at the moment, oh, yeah. Eric. I just How's finished that? season one. He's in that. It's really good, but oh. it's it's because of the Japanese connection, probably, you know, I really uh-huh. like it. It's set in Tokyo, 1999 Tokyo, so a little okay. bit back in time. So much fun. The Yakuza world and the, the hostess snack bar scene. It's really, really interesting. Based on a, a, a true story, initially, American, I think it was the first American to work for the Yomiuri Shimbun, which is a, one of the big Japanese national newspapers. He okay. passed the exam in Japanese. He took, of course, he had to take it in Japanese. He passed it. He got a job there working in the crime division, worked his way up, and he was covering the Yakuza stories at that time. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating. Oh, wow. Mm. You ever see the movie Black Rain? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, dude. Ridley Scott. Back Dude. in the day, yeah, Michael uh, Douglas, real, and yeah, and, and Andy Garcia he get, loses his head, he gets his head chopped off. God, yeah, that was Remember terrifying. That? Dude, when I was that a kid, was I saw that, I was like, and, and the guy who wrote that novel was Michael Crichton, the guy who who drew, wrote and directed the original Westworld, and then wrote the book for Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park: The Lost World, and you know, Michael Crichton's huge. I, I didn't know he wrote Black Rain. I know him, yeah, very well. Dude, yeah, no way. Oh God, that book was so good. It was like, and that was like in the early '90s, and it brought mm. up about the uh, the like how to like you know, hey, this Im- this video image could have been du- uh, computer altered. You know what I mean? The computers here are so good and cutting edge here in Japan. This video was altered. That's the murderer. You know what I mean? Wow. Back in- <laughs> Look at you, you remember it well, the story. Back I just remember the karaoke scenes and, the, of course, the uh, beheading scene. It was like, oh, oh my, my God. gosh. Yikes. That movie was great. Cool. Yeah, Ridley Scott movies, man. I, it makes me, I got to get a copy. I, I got a four, uh, I got a, an ultra 4K player, uh, a brand new one on uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, Meyer Meyer Burnett's suggestion. It's all regions. All region player, so I went and got some all region stuff out of the U.S. So okay, my first two sh- f- purchases was the Blake Seven box set. No way! Didn't know right. you were a Blake Seven fan. I'm not. We they just never showed it in the states. Okay. They showed Doctor Who, like Tom Baker's Doctor Who. Yeah. They showed I Claudius. They showed like all creatures great and small. You know, this is Sunday night in America. You know, <laughs> in the PB, you know, in one station, but they never showed Blake Seven. And it's not it's not available here. It's not published. It's not printed in America. So no way. Uh, yeah, this is that. a uh, this is one of you know, like, you know the this is a, a BBC copy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the fans of Blake Seven they are they you know of course they're huge fans of it. They're always trying to get people who haven't seen it to watch it. Uh-huh. Science fiction story from the BBC. It's 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 a bit you know rough and ready, a bit cheaply made because it was yeah. a BBC, but I've heard the writing, the story, and the performances are meant to be really good. Dude, I love this stuff, but it's like it's like Space 1999 and mm. UFO. I like those just like just beautifully shot, you know, and like basically British shot shows. Those have all, those are British production quality. I mean, those are not American made, sh- American made shows, and it, and, and it shows. 
And um, <laughs> so like, Blake 7 has that same production value that Tom Baker's Doctor Who had. Like, you know, the same, you know... Made, everything's made from paper mache. Yeah, and, uh, everything's made... It was just... And the spaceship kind of walls like are rocking. <laughs> oh, my Man. goodness. Man. <laughs> I mean, and, and here we are in the age of CGI, and, and this stuff kind of has so much more charm. I don't know if it looks better, but it's got, it's more charming. Yeah. It's real. It's tangible. Yeah, it's, it's actually real. Yeah. It might be cheap and, you know, cheap and cheerful, but, yeah, it's a real thing. So what else have you picked up recently, physical oh, media-wise? From Japan, it Ooh. just got here. I got one of my favorite all-time Japanese anime movies, which you cannot get in the States. Uh, this is Macross. Do you remember Love, 1984? Wow. Uh, in 1982, there was a 32-episode uh, television show you might know as Robotech season one. Uh, yeah. We know it as Macross, um, Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, and it was a complete story. And this is the the movie adaptation, which has like you know this is like this is one of the best hand drawn anime movies ever. This is just so beautiful. And then okay. on top of it, it's Macross, and so it's got its own version of the fighter. It's got some unique things. Like, you know, when you have, I don't know about you, how many anime have you watched? A bunch. Um, surprisingly, not that many. Really? It's more anime movies than anime series, Eric. Really? I've noticed yeah. that sometimes, like, because you have um, the anime series and then you have the, the, the motion picture release movie, yes. which is like, if it's not an edit of the show, um, and if it's a, a brand new edit, if it's an adaptation, of say thir- twenty six hours condensed into two hours, they make they have liberties. There's adaptation, so there's a you know a lot of things are condensed, a lot of things are, are taken out. So it's, there's always this joie de vivre in a way mm-hmm. to the adaptation. We're always saying respect the source, but there's nothing more divergent sometimes than like the Japanese movie versus its own series. You know, it's interesting. So you, you- did you grow up who were watching quite a lot of anime in the States? Because we were pretty limited in the UK. Mm-hmm. We were talking my age, of course, my generation, so I'm old. It's, we're talking we, years we, ago. We would have we had the same, much. We, must, we would have had the same programming available, perhaps. Uh, we okay. had something called Battle of the Planets, which was an adip- it was a dub of Gatchaman. Gatchaman! So did you have Battle of the Planets? Yeah, yeah, okay. we did. As you say, the, it was the um, the recut version, the re-edited version with an yeah. extra character that wasn't in the Japanese version. It right. was heavily it, censored as well, apparently. Exactly. It, it was <laughs> wonderful. And um, then there was, uh, we had we called it Star Blazers. And it was Space Battleship Yamato Seasons 1 and 2. Oh, okay, we didn't have that. No. So yeah, I mean, we so we watched Yam- the, the the Yamato. We we were called it the Argo, and um, that was huge because That's they, supposed to be awesome. By the it, way, I haven't it, seen oh my it. gosh, all the, there's so there, there's new here. Yamatos, dude. They're, they're, they clean it's it's oh, and they respect the source. They've so, made live action versions too. I think haven't the they? live action Yamato was amazing. Is it, it took, is it good? Oh gosh, it had all the same because it was of the same age and, and special effects value of Battlestar Galactica two thousand four. Um, so it, it just, it really had that, it's, it's like they took those same effects and production values and they told the Yamato story and I'm like in love with it. Those effects, by the way, the Battlestar Galactica 2004 version, I think really hold up. Mm-hmm. I used to they love do. those, oh, those like man. ship effects, those fight, like dog fight effects were really, really good. Mm. No way, Eric. So, uh-huh. y- so yeah, so we had, a uh, we had, and then came Voltron. Mm. And then before that, too, we had like uh, we had something called Transor Z, which was a dub of something they call Mazinger Z. And, and people everywhere in South America know, know Mazinger. OK. Mazinga! It's, it's like, you know, yeah, he's a giant robot and he's got the little he's the pilot. Oh, go look him up. Go, and then there's Go Nagai's um, uh, Getter robots. Oh, Go Nagai. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And then they know. knew the Getter robots as the Star Avengers, three Let's planes that transform into one giant Robo, and and just they had to cut it up, and uh, yeah, that's Mazinga. Never heard the, of it. Look at this. How yeah. awesome is that? And uh, that there's a little craft, a little red ship that docks on his head. You see that ridge on his helmet? <laughs> that you see the canopy? Well, that's I love like, it. That's the that, that's like a hovercraft that docks. I had a giant uh, toy of this as a child called a Shogun mm. Warrior. 
I was uh, yeah, I was like five years it's old. It's fascinating isn't it, what we get from different countries because they yeah, I didn't they didn't get this at all. Never heard yeah. of it, but I know Gona guy. He's very famous. Of course. But, but Mazinga is so huge in South America. So this is like one of the, like because anime is huge everywhere, especially in South America. Dub it into Spanish, and you don't have to clean it up. You know, look at that that design there. That's so awesome. So Dude. old school, nineteen seventies yeah. Japan. Nineteen seventies giant Robo stuff, man. This is mm. this was such fun, and uh, but yeah, I had a, a toy of this. It's the it's okay like second row and second picture in. Uh, there you go. That's my toy. That was a Shogun Warrior. He came up to my waist. How awesome is that, <laughs> dude? Yeah, that was a, it, it. Was solid. It was it was actually hollow plastic, and it shot rockets out of that right out of the uh, the right hand. And he oh had really goodness. pointy swords too. But yeah, that was that was one of my. To- I had that toy. <laughs> I, there's yeah, the, so there's we, the um, packaging as well, Eric. There you are. Look at that. Yeah, exactly, and it was a big toy, like Whoa. over two feet tall. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, that, I love it. And then when I was in, when when I was in high school, a freshman in high school, came, uh, dropped a little movie you might have heard of. It was 1988. Uh, and it came out in the movie theaters too because we have a couple of movie house movie theaters. Um, it's called Akira. Um, and we went to the movies and saw this movie. <laughs> no <laughs> and it way. Just blew our minds. If you just said the magic word, you know what's coming, don't you? Here we go. <laughs> no! No! Neo Tokyo in their glory. Have you read the book? I've read the first few chapters in English. That's Uh all. Talk about transition of adaptation, about keeping the spirit of it. Yet, I mean, you'll lose so much in adaptation. I mean, that that series is huge, isn't it? I don't know how many chapters, how many uh, books. It's like six big old books, I think. There's it's no way. It's like trying to adapt, you know, in the old days, trying to adapt The Lord of the Rings by is it Ralph Bakshi, similar thing, just trying to get too yeah. much into, you know, a, a one-hour It's hour so much easier to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to enjoy Akira? Yeah, just keep watching the movie. Don't even bother reading it. Even like, I think it was on either Twitter or Instagram, Eric, that some of the, the original hand-drawn, you know, the, the black and white version of the uh-huh. animation was just popping up. Some of the reels, it's just like, my God, this was hand-drawn. You yes. Know, cell oh. by cell by cell. Unbelievable. You know what still kill me are the trail, the light trails on the back of the yeah, bikes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are still I killer, get goosebumps. Man. Dude, or when the bridge falls and everyone's falling from the bridge. I mean, just like everyone has their own specific gravity and fall and shadow. It's just and then crumble of 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 Mason, you know. It's what just I mean? unbelievable. And, wow, it's just like what an amazing. And then there's like like a real laser. <laughs> it's not going to just be a. It's not going to be not a bolt. It's going to be a continuous line of light that was going to slice, you know, in, in a very linear fashion through anything. <laughs> you know, just like whoa, that was an interesting. Because it was like that was science fiction, not this like stupid laser bolt that you see in pew pew in Star Wars. It's a pew, continuous pew. stream. Pew pew, Tom King. Pew pew. Pew pew. I've got another clip, Eric. Here we go. A little bit of the go, go, um, go. The, the people animation, the fights, the fights while they're riding those incredible bikes. Here we go. Aye. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. That's gotta hurt. That ah. headbutt is unbelievable. Just that moment that, and it just like captures it. The frame. Pauses. Wow. Have to keep those uh, clips very short, folks, just in case you're not sure why, because we get hit by YouTube, by, you know, animation companies. It's so easy. So eight seconds is the key. Under nine seconds, usually you're okay. And change the music. I, I put YouTube free music on that. So Good, go. because, yeah, they'll get you. They'll get you, Eric. They'll get they'll you. Get so. You. Oh, yeah. Oh, wasn't yeah. going to plan to go on too long. I was going to keep it like between like forty-five minutes to an hour because you cool. know, hey, who's got time to watch these? You know what I mean? You know exactly. You know? But sometimes people tune in. Like I tune into your show, especially the one with Jim from Weird Science Comics talking about Grant Morris. Oh, Jim, gotta love Jim. I'm going to 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 crash one one of these days. We're gonna and we have a special guest on talking Morrison. You know what I mean? It's gonna be me. 
We've got yeah, to arrange it because it's the, with the time difference, it really sucks, as you mm. know. You know, same with how we're doing this now. But with Jim, he's always busy. It's either it's either late night for him or mm-hmm. early morning for him. That's the way we we have to arrange it. So mm-hmm. for you, it'd be probably early morning would be better, wouldn't it? Late nights not not good. It's true, yeah, like on a weekend too. And I have some time off coming up from work too. So like, I'll be, my flexibility will be open. But like, I had an idea, and my idea was, I have a couple of his misses in my long box let's not talk about grant morrison's greatest hits let's a focus a very special episode about a couple of his rare misses oh okay for me would be uh, named nameless annihilator and sea guy and i love sea guy i haven't read those out the only one i've heard of is sea guy Showing yeah. my, uh, my lack of Morrison knowledge there. So there we go. I love Grant Morrison. So it, uh, it, it's it's really good opportunity when you find another comic books fan that really likes Grant Morrison as much as you. You are turning Jim into one if you haven't already. Um, that's a plane going overhead here in Boston. Oh, no, you're good. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> um, but Jim was a Morrison on the – he was like, oh, I hate this guy kind of thing. He was like, no, no, you just yeah. got to read them. You got to read them the right ones. Please, here, here's a suggestion. And you got him. And now he's like, oh, wow, this stuff is is good. And I'm like, yes. I thought I was a fool, though, Eric. I thought I'm going to go, I'm going to launch him with the Invisibles, which is the craziest, isn't it? One of the most crazy series he's ever done. But we weren't just reading that. And because we're reading it from the beginning, you know, Mm -hmm. Jim could see. You could see how it was kind of building up because it starts off not crazy, not out mm-hmm. there. It starts off as like a normal young man's rebellion story. And yes. Jim was loving the, all the music references. He's yes. a huge, you know, music file, Jim. As you know, he's, he used to be in a band. He was a singer in a band. Mm-hmm. Well, that's he loves why he's so good them. at those, uh, yeah. those parodies he makes. I know, aren't they great? <laughs> I, I hope he's getting to see the individual uh, cover to each individual floppy of the yes. 66 we, issues of the invisibles altogether i believe and um and the wonderful oh god the, the volume three of the invisibles counts down <laughs> from from it does 12. yeah yeah and and they, they got these brian ballen covers and they're sick oh, they're brian great ballen. and just like well he did the animal man covers of course as you know yeah, very famous and just, me and jim of course we're loving those it's great to revisit them to go back and see these those covers are iconic now yes. aren't they? oh man it's just this is like the art and comic book art and it's just this the premier stuff this is what we're unfairly comparing today's offerings to you know this is true oh, yeah and it's but it's like oh the i read invisibles and floppy and and, and he answered his own mailbag until the end of volume two so that those, those are like really good reasons that the cover and the mailbag you can only get in the floppy and like because i know like we we're, we're i've got trade paperbacks right now like you know but I need to go and get that run of the Invisibles in floppy. Why not? Own comic books, buy back issues. I only have the first, how many is it? About 20. And actually, I brought them over with oh, me, so they're here in Japan. I've got the first 20 really? floppies. Nice. It's better than nice. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to, um, to share screen here a minute. Pull up some Animal Man. They're it's a books. jungle out there, Eric. They're on my bookshelf. Ooh, look at you with all those. Yeah, they're they're always. I know exactly where they are. They're on my bookshelf. And uh, kissing Mr. Quimper. Mr. Kissing, Quimper always used Mr. to freak Quimper. me out. He's, yeah, we haven't got to Mr. <laughs> Quimper yet. Oh gosh, and I love the end. There's this really good scene. My okay, two my two favorite scenes in The Invisibles are this one. Dane is having. A, um, he's playing the video game with Boy. And it's a shooter up. It's a first person. And he's like, I don't know. That bloke over there since he seems like he could be a cool dude. And here he is shooting him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's having one of those Buddha moments because he's supposed to be the future Buddha. And, Buddha. Uh, Buddha. And then there's just like when, when, when King Mob went to the went to the mountaintop, he grew his hair out and his mantra. And this is one panel of him from behind at the moon on the top of the mountain. And he's in. I am as cool as Bruce Lee. 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 That is his mantra. <laughs> and I've stolen mantra. it from him. That's King Mob. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? We're just about to... The next one we're going to review, I don't know if it's going to be this week or next week, but the uh-huh. Gideon Stargrave Entropy oh! in the UK three-part. Do you remember that? Right. Yeah, he's been tortured and interrogated. He's been captured. Got it here. Let me just share screen. Gotcha, gotcha. 
this cover area, one of my favorites. Oh, uh-huh. which one is it? Gotcha. Oh man, that one about the henchman getting killed in those last minutes of his life. That's it. That that's that's impeccable storytelling. Look at that cover. Look at that color. That's it's Sean Phillips, yeah? Yeah. Oh, he, he's, all these he's colors... used like early digital art there. You can see the background yeah. with the, the, the fractals gradient, and stuff. The gradients on that cover, because like, back then it was just it was new and that was be- yeah. But when you it get to the like... this this, I much prefer this, the title page, the credits page. Look at that. That is awesome. Yeah, and this this is uh Steve Yole, right? This is actually who is it? Is it Phil? Yeah. Is it Jimenez? Is this Phil Jimenez? Oh, it is. Phil, Look yeah. at that. There we go, Phil Jimenez. Oh, you can tell. Beautiful. Oh man. So as you say, King Mob is uh, being tortured. This is very uh, familiar if you've seen The Matrix, by the way, which came out yeah. a lot later than The Invisibles. You know, they're trying to break his mind, so he he's erecting these defenses, and one of these defenses is this character Gideon Stargrave. You know, is mm-hmm. he real? Was he real? Was he a Michael Jimenez Walcott to creation? <laughs> and boys in the next room getting tortured too. And uh, it's like the end. Is this the end of the invisible team? And uh, Oh my goodness. <laughs> awesome. Great stuff. So yeah. Okay, interesting area. I'd like to see that. That idea of Grant Morrison's missus. Not his actual his missus, missus, not his lady wife, but you know right, his right. missus. How do we get out of here? And here's what, here's a suggestion sharing. for the show. This is in this is all in one. You know this one? You know Marvel Boy? Marvel Boy? I haven't... I mean, I'm so, Beautiful I'm art by J.G. Jones. This is Marvel this. Boy. No. Why don't, oh, why this, I don't, this is all Why don't I know this, Eric? What's going oh, on? Oh, this is Marvel Boy with art by J.G. Jones. This is Multiverse Goodness. This is Marvel Knights, published, I believe, in 2002. Okay. Um, I missed it because I was moving to Japan. <laughs> I stopped buying comics for quite a few years. <gasps> Hold on one second. Here yeah, you go for it. If you have some... Examples of Originally really published are, in two thousand, two thousand one. Two thousand, two thousand one. Okay. And it's about it's it's a, just a new telling of Marvel, you know, or you mm. know, and this is actually Novar, the Marvel oh, boy. Nova, Nova. And the art in this is just so good, and the and it's just over the top Grant Morrisony goodness. Nice. And that, that's not Iron Man. That's that. that but it's like they're tra- mm. he's trapped on a multiverse. And he's just, he's this young punk and he gets free and he's got oh, all his yeah. powers. It's really good. This I don't know that, old, that um, artist, J.G. Jones. J.G. No way. Jones. Oh gosh, he's a really good artist. He was supposed to do all the all the art on uh, Grant Morrison's Final Crisis. And he got like four or five issues in. And yeah. then he had to get pick up artists to finish for him because he just, he wasn't cranking them out. Good Super. stuff. JG Jones also did uh, Wanted with Mark Miller. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. I thought he looked familiar. JG yeah. Jones, Jones. Is, is, is so good. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. How Waka are you? Waka. Excuse me. Okay, thanks for that. JG Jones. I'll have to have, to have a look. I'll have to have a look later. Okay, he's done. Um, is it Black Widow? The Marvel Knights Black Widow, the complete collection. Mm hmm. Unity from Valiant. Don't know that. Mm. Excellent. Indeed. Napalm Lullaby. Mm. Okay. Kula Bula. Okay, Eric, should we should we wrap things up? Coming up to sure. 50, 50 minutes. What yeah, do you want we- to shout out for people who may be um, new to your channel? Please, uh, let's go for it. Let's let's plug All the right. salt of the soup. <laughs> sully, sully, sully. <laughs> I'm Eric O'Sullivan, ordained minister on the internet. Hence, Reverend Sully. I do a comics talk twice a week on Wednesdays. Hello, new release day. And uh, on Sundays, I usually do a live stream. I've been doing a live stream for a couple of months now. And yeah. uh, but also it's like, you know, with my work life balance. I might go back to, like, you know, just, you know, just making a video. But it's Wednesdays are new release day in America. So we preview with League of Comic Geeks dot com. And uh, we just, you know, you know kind of do the show like what's coming out this week let's talk about mm. it what am i going to get what's on my poll list what looks interesting and one thing i do is i start at the bottom of that page and i look up a couple of rows because sometimes you're gonna see something that catches your eye and you're like why aren't i taking a chance on an independent comic book you know we need to take more chances on stuff that we really you know haven't like you know considered Be like oh wow look at this like the last book's I got that I did that to me was one called the sickness. Um, it's really, you know, it's, it's um, hard to find. 
and it's five issues long, but it's just it's black and white pencil art, and it's very okay. David Lynch and um, grotesque and quirky Ooh. and supernatural, and uh, it's got my attention because I love good art, and it's just really it, it's a very basic comic, but it's also very complex. It's black and white. You know what I mean? It's no frills. It's straight pencils. And um, but it works. Sometimes people might think that's like lackluster. But also, you know, just no. sometimes, no, you just got to see the, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, really nice to, to go that basic. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a treat. And the opposite of that going is, is Ram V and Philippe, Philippe Andrade's uh, on Boom Studios. They're doing uh, something called Rare Flavors. Rare and flavors, yeah. It's wrapping up in six issues, so uh, mm. it's got two more issues to go. This is a comic book's, a comic book lover's comic book. Um, it's got such a wonderful curated color palette, and for me as a chef, it, it always brings up food. There's a the theme of food in each one, of course, because we find out the reason about the food and the nigh immortal, like you know, and the rare flavors, and it's like it's part of the mystery. But it's beautiful art. It's it's very European. This is like a. Mm. This, is, this reminds me of a very you know. This is going to make a great coffee table book one day, and but the, the floppies itself, just like I'm glad glad to be part of this experience, being into the serialized format of it, it with the anticipation of the next issue, and it's really re rewarding for me as a comic book fan who buys comic books at his local comic book shop once a week every Wednesday. Usually every Wednesday. I'm, I'm going Saturday this week. I just couldn't do it yesterday. But uh, Rare Flavors, uh, mm. written by Ram V. You heard of Ram V? He's he's done a lot of stuff, um, especially at DC Comics, too. He did Swamp That's Thing. the art style there, isn't it, Eric? Yeah, as you were saying. Yeah, I mean, um, it's 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 not for everyone, uh, but it's very European. Um, and it's, uh, it's very Indian, too, like, you know, uh, subcontinent. Indian too, but you know it's Felipe more, Andrade. Felipe yeah. Andrade. Is they the also artist. teamed up. They did something, the Many Deaths of Layla Star, which has been oh, collected. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that's the same teams. Uh, you yeah, know, so um, and cool. I, I have to tune into that and his Swamp Thing. Ram V is currently writing Detective Comics and has been for over the past year. He's doing this wonderful Batman story called Batman Nocturne. It's the art in that is fabulous. The storytelling, it's such a slow burn. It's Baroque. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's so like ornate. It's so detailed. It's so dark. It's, it's so, it's so well done. If, if people are complaining about Chip Zdarsky, uh, is vapid storytelling over vapid, on Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have such deep complexity, uh, like over on tech. On Detective Comics. I'm with trying to remember the artist's name, Eric. It's on top of my head. I can't. I think, is it Federici? No. Yeah, uh, Federici, yeah, is, is doing a lot of work right now. Yeah, and Sean Alexander had done the, the arc before. Stefan, oh, sorry, Stefano Raffaele Raffaele and Riccardo Federici. Yeah, Stefan Raffaele, too. He did the first couple of issues of the of Catwoman, um, Nine oh, okay. Lives, with yeah. Timmy Howard. And it's like, that's what I was saying about the Italian um, penciler. With those fine lines, that attention to femininity of like fashion models of, of Milo Manara, of the face and of the body, like this real real respect for woman. Beautiful you curvy, know? curvy yes. lines. We love the curves, don't we, Eric? Oh, we do. Gosh darn it! I love a well drawn woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. that's cool. Yeah, as um, as you know, like with the time difference, um, sometimes I'm able to catch yours when you're either not not live, maybe when you do mm -hmm. your premieres. So if it's early morning for me, I do like watching those. So do check those out, folks, if you've cool. not. Yeah. Very, if you're looking for a positive spin on comics, because uh -huh. hey, there's so much negativity out there. Yeah, as we, we haven't know. even gone yeah, to the gloomy negativity shit. Negativity get clicks, don't they, Eric? Neg negativity unfortunately gets clicks. Yeah. People like me and you who focus on positives, we don't seem to do as well, but we don't care because we love what we do and we don't want to be ranting and raving. Right, it, and we're talking sucks. with other people who love this stuff. And we're in a very, I, I mean, when it comes to having a tribe, I'm very, you know, pleased that I've been accepted into a tribe of really interest, uh, you know, interesting, um, diverse voices. And it's like, Wes is thinking critical is a big, you know, you know, is a hub of that. And I got to, like, you know, meet you and like Max Von, uh, Von Priestley and, and uh, Josh, uh, um, Josh McDonald of Popeye Culture, of Yule Carter of Fantastic Comics, of Jim Werner of, of, of Weird Science, of Doc. Uh, uh, he doesn't have his own channel. He's 
basically Wes's co-host. Wes at Thinking Critical. These are if you want some really good comic book talk in your life, you know any of these channels, subscribe and they, they you know you'll be talking comics all week long. And you know some of them you know gets a little bit like you know outragey concern, but most of us we're pretty much like this. <laughs> we love comics. <laughs> We do. We just want to talk about the, the thing we love, which is yeah. one thing is comics, and that's it. Simple as stuff. that. Yeah, there's plenty of good stuff out there. Don't don't let all the outrage content get you down. Seriously, here I am wearing my Ethan Van Skyver shit. You know what I mean? Don't let me down. This has been awesome, Eric. It's been cool. We've we've, we've covered a lot of topics today. We've kind of just we've gone yeah. where the spirit has taken us. And we I really didn't enjoyed have to it. Be gloomy either. I mean, it's been it's great catching up. No, no, we didn't. Time. There's things we didn't yeah. talk about. We talked about maybe, but maybe another time. But yeah, it's been a you really know, positive uh, chat. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly, and thank you guys, everyone out there in TV land. And, uh, you know, say your prayers. <laughs> good night. Cheers. God bless. Good health. Yes, we'll see you. It's we'll see you in the next uh, next video. Don't forget, subscribe to Eric O'Sullivan and, of course, me. If you're not subscribed to me, what are you doing here? Exactly. Goodness hey, gracious. I got something to ask you real quick. Hey, Gray, are you Genki? I am. I'm Genki. Even though it's early Friday morning, I've had my coffee, what? I've had my toast, and I'm feeling Genki. I love the way that people are saying that word now, Eric. (laughs) People people are using it. (laughs) They know what it means. The the, the vital key, the vital spirit. Yes, are you healthy? Are you well? How are you doing? Are you in good spirits today? Goku's got Genki. Uh, You know? Or is that that Doki? (laughs) I don't know. Doki Doki. Doki Doki Doki? (laughs) 